On free speech, it seems to me, in my 57 years of being on this planet, that free speech has never been under more ferocious attack, not mm -hmm. in places you would expect, like authoritarian regimes, but actually in, in democracies. I never mm -hmm. thought I'd, I'd come to a day in my lifetime where people were literally being fired, mm -hmm. or in some cases imprisoned, for expressing honestly held opinions, even if I find those opinions grotesquely wrong or offensive. You know, it's worse than that. P people underestimate the significance of this because it isn't, we're not having a fight about who has the right to speak freely. That's nothing, that's, that's, that's a peripheral problem, even though that can be serious in and of itself. We're having a fight about whether or not your claim that free speech exists is nothing but a masquerade for your willingness to dominate and use power. And so if I was taking that tack, I'd say, it's all well and good for you to speak about free speech, but look, you're white and you're middle class and you're British and you're, and you're privileged and you have this theory about free speech that your ancestors derived, but the only reason they ever derived that to begin with is so they could exercise their power. Mm. There's no such thing as free speech. That's just a lie to mask a power claim. And that's a way worse cynical criticism of the notion of free speech that you can't speak because I don't agree with I mean, it's a, it's a form of fascism, isn't it? I mean, these people- It's worse than that. The, the kind of, the, the ultra woke, uh, brigade out there. They, they categorize themselves as liberals, but there's nothing liberal about that mentality. But when you have a cancel culture, which is driven by, if you don't agree with what I say, you're gonna get shamed, vilified, canceled, fired, maybe even imprisoned. That is actually what fascist regimes do to people, to their populace. Yeah, but the fascists are more straightforward about it. Because they basically come out and say something like, shut up or we'll beat you. Right. Whereas the compassionate types, who are narcissistic compassionate, compassionate types, they come out and say, well, we're really trying to save the world, you know, and we're, we're acting in everyone's best interest, and we think it would be better if, if you should just, you know, regulate what you say. Because if you don't, you're not, you're not a good person. And so that's, it's much more, I'd, I'd take the fascist bully over the narcissistic, over the compassionate narcissist any time. They're way more straightforward. I mean, I, we're, we live again in an era where the hashtag be kind, yeah, yeah. Almost invariably is used by people who are the least kind people I think I've ever encountered. Yeah, In other well, words, people that love to be utterly vicious. Yeah, well, kindness... And yet they hide behind this fake persona of hashtag be kind. Yeah, yeah. Well, kindness is tricky, you know, because one of the things you deal with very commonly if you're a clinical psychologist, apart from depression and anxiety, is, well, behavior therapists offer assertiveness training. and now. The people who need assertiveness training are all often people who are too agreeable, compassionate, polite, by temperament. Now the problem with that is that they let every other, they let people walk all over them because they don't they don't stand up enough for themselves. And the consequence of that is they get resentful, and then they get bitter, and then they get conniving, and then they get and then they'll mob. And so because they're not, they'll do anything for everyone else, but. They push themselves beyond their limits, mm. and, they, and then they won't even recognize the limits because they feel, well, if I'm not doing everything for you, then, then I'm not a good person. It's like, no, a good person does a little for you. Like, if I'm acting properly with you, say in this conversation, there's something in it for you, mm. and there's something in it for me, right? right? And we want that to be reciprocal, mm. and so the cost of me bending too far in your direction is that I'll become bitter and resentful and conniving, and, and that and resentment is an unbelievably toxic state of being.